So this morning we are starting the theme called Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, and it's a call to self-assessment. It's, a, it's a, a chance to do some introspection. So often we can come and sit in church and we can listen to the, the preaching. We go home unchanged. We apply nothing. We don't get challenged. And, and my prayer this morning is that we would allow the Word to challenge us and to act as a mirror to show us where we are lacking in our lives. Amen. Here are two important questions we have to ask ourselves this morning before we leave this place. If reflecting Jesus was considered a crime, would there be enough evidence to convict me? And second, how much Jesus do I reflect to the world? Two questions we have to answer before we leave this morning and perhaps ask ourselves continually throughout the week so that we can make the adjustments necessary so that we can reflect Christ accurately to the world. Amen. Genetics is a crazy thing. Genetics is a crazy thing. When two people um, merge uh, and produce offspring, the offspring will demonstrate specific characteristics of the father and specific characteristics of the mother. Appearance, temperament, humor, mannerisms, and uh, parent-specific behavior will reveal itself in and through the children without them even having to watch their parents. So I'm going to show you two pictures of my offspring. My one son is, my one son, my only son is Zachary. Zachary looks like me, but expresses many of Nadia's side of the family's mannerisms. He is an introvert. He enjoys small groups of people for a short while. He doesn't like loud music unless he's playing it in his car. He enjoy, which is, it's just how he is. He doesn't get stressed or easily anxious. He never feels the need to rush. When Jesus comes back and the rapture happens, I promise you, he's going to be waiting in the clouds going, Zachary, we are all waiting for you. It's just, that's just how he is. The second picture is of Courtney. Courtney looks like me. And she has my sense of humor, my temper, my sarcasm, and my impatience. At times, I would open her door and throw some raw steak into the room just to appease her before starting a conversation. Courtney is not a morning person. Amen? She's very much like me. The fact that she has arms, legs, eyes, ears, and a belly button is the only evidence that Nadia is a mother because Nadia also has those things. Maybe you've witnessed that in your own family. You have witnessed this in your children. You look at your kids and realize the pain you are enduring is the pain you caused your parents when you were that age. It's called God's justice. Maybe you find yourself acting so much like one of your parents it scares you. It's genetics, baby. It's genetics. Maybe you have been asking God to put some chlorine in your gene pool. Sometimes we feel like that. But I want you to know something. As much as our genetics, as much as our DNA determines some of our mannerisms, our actions, the things that we do, we don't just have human DNA. When we received Christ, when we received Him by, by, by our salvation, when the Holy Spirit came and, and lived in us, we received an injection of His DNA into our lives. Amen? And so we need to get to the point where we become less and we allow him to become more. We have to decrease so that he can increase so that when the world looks at us, they don't see our sin, they don't see our attitudes, they don't see our rebellion, they don't see our human DNA expressing itself, but they see divine DNA. They see the, the DNA of Jesus by his spirit expressing himself through us. Amen. Our scripture for this morning, our central scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as from the Lord, the Spirit. And this morning as we look into God's word, I believe the word of God is going to act as a mirror that will either reveal the image of Jesus or it will reveal our image still expressed. 
which means we are too much alive. And the hope is this morning that we allow ourselves to be honest and and answer the question, how much of Jesus am I expressing, am I reflecting to the world? It's God's will that we carry the image and likeness of Jesus. Amen. After all, we were created in his image. The image of God has been distorted by our pride, by our sin, and by our insecurities. But God desires for the church to reflect his image and the image of Christ in the world, an undistorted image. As Christ followers, we are supposed to reflect the image of Jesus to those around us. And I realize in my own life that so often I fall short. So often it's my greatest desire for people to look at me and see Jesus, but oh, help them, Lord, they only see me. But I have to decrease. We have to decrease. Amen. As we gaze into God's word this morning, as we look upon him, as we allow the word of God to be a mirror, we have to allow his word to transform us, to to help us go through a metamorphosis so that we become more like Jesus. At least that's God's plan for our lives. Amen. So how to transform into the same image as Jesus? Just three steps, I believe, this morning. Three things that the Word of God teaches us that will help us to transform into the Jesus image and decrease in our own. The first thing is this, we have to clean a mirror. I have been to some places and I've looked into mirrors and they hadn't touched that mirror for maybe years. And all you see is like this hazy reflection. And so the dirt that's on the mirror doesn't reflect properly. You see, the world is looking at the mirror of our lives and it's meant to see Jesus, but there's so much sin, so much rebellion, so much opposition to the will of God that when they look at us, they don't see Jesus reflected They just see the dirt. Amen. Genesis 1 verse 26, and it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the heavens and over the cattle and over the earth and over all the creepers creeping on the earth. And God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. He created them male and female. I want you to understand that we are created in the image of God. So when people look at us, they're supposed to see the image of Jesus. The problem is when they look at us, they see something else. Man was created in the image of God. He was perfect, but then man sinned. Man rebelled. Man was disobedient. And so that image was distorted. And often, instead of walking in the image of Christ, we walk in the distortion of the image of Christ. And so people don't see a true reflection of Jesus through us. See, we're not simply created by God. We were created in his image. We were made to look like him. We were made in his likeness. And even though God made us in his likeness, man allowed the image of God to be distorted by disobedience. In Genesis 3, verse 6 to 11, it says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. I want to remain biblically accurate this morning. Who took the fruit? I just wanted to get an answer on that very quickly. Who took the fruit? Ah, wonderful. I see everyone's spirit led you. But Adam, the course, is standing right next to her. Right? She also gave some to her husband who was with her. (laughs) And he ate it. She at least had a brain. She could decide. He's just like... Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid themselves from the Lord. 
among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid and he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat? You see, when we sin, when we rebel, when we do in opposition to God's word, what happens is we distort the image of God. And so Adam looks down after his sin and he goes, I'm naked. The image he's now projecting in his own mind is wrong. And so what does he do? He takes fig leaves and he tries to cover his sin and his nakedness with fig leaves. And don't we often try and do that? We sin, but we, we don't want anyone to know, so we cover it with fig leaves. And when people look at Adam and Eve, they don't see the perfection that God created. They see the works of man. The Bible says he tended the garden. And so he took what he tended and he put it together to make himself a little garment of fig leaves. We distort the image of God when we rebel, when we sin, and when we're disobedient. Amen? C.S. Lewis says this. He says, I have lived all my life among shadows and broken images. We are broken images. When people look at us, often they see shattered glass. Often they see dirt. Often they see chipped glass because they, they, our image isn't reflecting Jesus. You with me this morning? We must acknowledge our sin. We must ask for forgiveness. We must repent. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 9 and 10, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. When we confess our sin, when we say, God, here I am, I repent, I turn from my sin. What we're saying is, God, I want the mirror to be clean so that your reflection can reflect to the world accurately. I want them to see you and not my son. Amen. Number two, we must die daily. No one enjoys the pain of death. No one enjoys the discomfort. As living sacrifices, we don't enjoy the comfort of, you know, the discomfort of pain, of, of having to die. Like, like, I still want to do my will. I still want to enjoy my life. I still want to make money. I still want to be successful. Amen. And so what we're doing is we are building our image and we're reflecting that to the world instead of saying, none of that's important. It has nothing to do with me. I'm here for his good pleasure. We want to increase. We want to win. We want more. We want to be recognized and appreciated. We want to be loved and adored, yet Paul gives us a very different view on how we ought to live. In Galatians 2 verse 19, it says, For through the law I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified and no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul makes a declaration that he is dead, that he was crucified with Christ. Let me ask you a question this morning. When last were you crucified? You see, I must make the the decision every single morning of my life. God, I have so many things that I want to accomplish. There are so many things that I want to do. There are so many things that I want to enjoy, but I lay them at your feet. And I tell you this morning, I want that mirror clean. I want to die to my own desires. And God, I want you to, I want Jesus, I want you to, to, to express your image through me. Let them see you, please, Lord Jesus. Don't let them see Brent. Amen. Galatians 5 verse 24 says, And those who belong to Christ have, uh, to Christ Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. In other words, he's saying they have made the decision that their desires and all the things they want to do have been crucified. They've been, they've been put to death. This is one of the most challenging things for believers to do is to put to death our own desires, our will. Amen? Amen. Paul continues. He says, 
that he no longer lives, but Christ lives in him. In other words, I don't live for recognition. I don't live for affirmation. I don't live for affection. I don't live for power. I don't live for position, and I don't live for possessions. I don't live for myself. I live only for him. I live to reflect Christ in every moment of my life. Can we say that this morning? How alive are we this morning? How alive is the image of Jesus in us this morning? Are we living for ourselves or are we living for Jesus? Oswald Chambers says, No enthusiasm will ever stand the strain that Jesus Christ will put upon his worker. Only one thing will, and that is a personal relationship to himself, which has gone through the mill of his spring cleaning until there is only one purpose left. I am here for God to send me where he will. In other words, Lord, take me this morning. I know that there are, I'm so alive inside. I'm so much me, but I want you to put me through some spring cleaning. God, take out all the dirt. God, take out all the desire, all the will that I have. God, and I want to say to you at the end of the day, as I die to self, Lord, I'm here. Send me where you will. In other words, I will do what you want me to do and not what I want to do. Perhaps this morning, some of us need to put through the mill of spring cleaning. Perhaps we need to get back on the cross and die a little bit more today. It's a difficult thing to hear. Amen. Luke 20 verse 22, it says, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicity and said to them, show me a denarius. Whose image an inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. He said to them, then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Think about that for a moment. They give him a coin. They say, are we supposed to give taxes to Caesar? And he says, whose image is on the coin? And they say Caesar's. And he says, well, then give it to Caesar. Let me ask you a question this morning. Whose image has been imprinted on us? His. Amen. And so we are supposed to take that image and we're supposed to give it to him. We're supposed to express it to the world. We're supposed to show people Jesus and not ourselves. Whose image do you bear this morning? If God's, you must give yourself to him entirely and follow wherever he leads. And the third thing is this, let his light shine you know why our light shouldn't shine because our light is dimmed by our rebellion and by our sin by our disobedience so we have to say jesus the the mirror has been cleaned jesus i've died to myself now let your light shine let your right light reflect from me to the world let them see you and not me jesus if they see me they will reject everything but when they see you they are drawn to you Years ago, we used to wear shirts that had the branding. I know this is going to be traumatic to the younger people. Our branding was in our collar. Anyone 50 and older that remembers that the branding was only in the collar? And now these days, the branding is everywhere, right? It's over the chest. It's down the pants. It's on the back. It's inside the clothing. Like, like these shoes are vans. Check them out. Cool, eh? This is Emerald Prise. Mr. Price, for those who don't know. My pants is AC Kerman. It's Ackerman's. But what happens is someone took the brand, put it on a shirt, and then they made it trend. So everyone looks at the trend. We are supposed to be trendsetters with the image of Jesus. Amen. Our brand name is God's masterpiece. Our brand image is Jesus. The trend we set is good works. I've got a few pictures I want you to look at. And every image 
has a slogan that goes with the image. Can I have the first one, please? If you can tell me what the slogan is for this image, I will give you a chocolate after the service. Anyone? Hmm? I can't hear it nice and loud. Everywhere you go. I didn't think anyone would get it. I will make good on my, my promise. Everywhere you go. There's a brand experience. People go, it's, it's everywhere you go, right? The second one is ESCOM. Does anyone know what the, the little slogan is? This is the slogan, because no one's going to guess. Electricity for all. <laughs> or, in the South African context, it's one man, one volt. We all have a brand experience, right? We look at something and we go, it's given us an experience. You look at empty and everywhere you go, that's the experience they want to give people. You look at ESCOM, it's meant to be, it's meant to be electricity for all. But we have an experience. So let me ask you, what, what logo, this logo, what, what the experience is of the world? Christian. Christian or follower of Christ. What is the brand experience the world gets when they see this. So many people, just so you know, the fish behind me is the symbol of the Christian faith. For those that are a little older, you would know that. Younger people don't realize that. People often put stickers of fish on their car. And I encourage you most sincerely to remove it from your car. I'll tell you why. Because in a moment where you're in traffic or someone cuts in front of you, the image of Jesus suddenly disappears and is suppressed in your life, right? Some people begin speaking in tongues, others use sign language, and, and, and then the people look at them and go, wow, look at that symbol on the back of their car, little fish, they're Christians, look how they're acting. Look at the witness, look at the light that they are expressing. It's so dim and it's so ugly. Amen. I read a powerful quote yesterday. Those who don't know Jesus don't read the Bible. They read us. What are people reading when they look at our lives? Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are God's masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. The Bible says when we operate in the good works, people will glorify our Father in heaven. You see, we are created in Jesus to do good works. The good works is the brand experience that people get. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Lord Jesus, I need to die because I don't express those things enough. I need to die, Jesus, so that you can live and express your image through me. Amen. Amen. We are marketers of this brand. We are what people see. If they see Jesus, they will be drawn to him. If they see us, most often they reject what we represent. I read a quote, and this is by far probably the saddest quote I've ever read concerning the Christian church, concerning Christians. It was a quote by a guy who was a Hindu, Mahatma Gandhi. And he says, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. How sad. How sad that the world looks at us and often they go, who do you represent? You look nothing like that. Many, many years ago, myself and my wife had a domestic conversation. And the domestic conversation, we expressed ourselves with a little bit of amplitude. 
And my son, who was very young at the age, runs inside. He says, Daddy, you're a pastor. What are you doing? Never mind that I'm a pastor. I'm a follower of Christ. And if I can't even express the image of Christ to my son, what a failure. That part of me must die. And I have to say, Jesus, let me express you in every situation in my life. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. I'm going to ask you just to put your hand on your heart. Let's do business with God. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. Focus on Jesus, not on me. It's not about me. It's about him. It's always been about him. It will always be about him. I'm going to invite you to, to ask Jesus to be formed in you. Give yourself to imitating Jesus. Die daily and give yourself to living life with his image expressed through you. Father, we come this morning and we, we ask you, Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us of our sin, of our disobedience, of our rebellion, of our wickedness. Cleanse us, Lord. Our hearts are wicked, despicable. Jesus, forgive us, cleanse us, wash us again. Your word says that if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of unrighteousness. Forgive us as we confess our sin today. I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would help us to decrease, to die daily to self. And Jesus, I pray that you would, you would live through us that you would express yourself through us, that you would express your light through us. And Lord, I pray that you would use us as your light bearers. May we express your light to the world. May they see Jesus in us and glorify our Father in heaven for because of the good works that we walk in. We give you honor. We give you praise. We, we give you thanksgiving. We thank you for this great salvation. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Lord, we choose today to decrease. We choose every day to decrease. When we wake up, we will say, I must die. Jesus, live through me today. This life and I live, I live through faith in the Son of God. Let our light shine. Let your light shine through us. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You can put your hands down. Keep your heads bowed for a moment. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. You might be and you say to me, Brent, I'm, I'm standing here listening to you speak about this, this image of Christ that we have to reflect, but I've never received Christ. I don't have his image in me. I don't have his light in me. But this morning, something is stirring on the inside. This morning, I feel like I need to choose him. I need to receive his forgiveness. I need to receive him as my Lord and Savior. Something is stirring. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is Jesus, so that whoever believes in him would not die but have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but by me. We can't skip Jesus. If you're not sure that you're a child of God, you can be sure today. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is grace. There is love. There is acceptance. There is forgiveness. And there is a new life for you. If you don't know him today and the Holy Spirit is stirring, you'll know this because your heart's pounding right now. or There's a stirring on the inside. That is the Holy Spirit saying, come receive, receive Jesus so that he can reconcile you to the Father. If you want to make sure that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life and that when you die, you will spend eternity with Father, you have to make this decision today. It's such an urgent decision so while every head is bowed while every eye is closed no one's looking around this is between you and the living God this morning if you say to me Brent that's me 
I want you to take a bold step this morning. I want you to, when I, when I make the call, just lift your hand. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you to the front. I am going to pray a prayer for you. If that's you and you know God is speaking into your heart this morning, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands and I want to include you in a prayer. One, two, three. Just slip your hand up. God bless you. Slip your hand up nice and high. God bless you. Nice and high. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else this morning, don't leave without making this most important decision. I'm going to ask everyone to pray this, especially those with their hands up. Say, Father, this morning, I thank you for your great love. Your word says, if I would say with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I would be saved. I do that today. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me of unrighteousness. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I choose today to lay down my life, to pick up my cross, and to follow you, Jesus, all the days of my life. I thank you because I have done this. Heaven is my home. God is my Father. Thank you, Jesus for saving me. Amen.